Okay. Well, with last week being different the way it was, I wasn't sure what this week was going to be, so I have a, had a message that I could do either or. Try to be, <laughs> try and be prepared, right? So, uh, Liam, open your Bibles to Second um, Samuel chapter 11. We'll be back on Jude next week. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 11. This is your water, and it's got lemon in it. That was disgusting. <laughs> oh. That woke me up anyway. Yeah. Just a little bit. Ah. Second Samuel chapter 11. I don't like lemon. <coughs> when life gives you lemons, you just give them back. All right. So, anyway, we're going to talk a little bit this morning about um, reaping what you sow. So, here we are in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 11. We're going to read a few verses here. And. Uh, well, let's just get started. Verse number one says, And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. And one of the things that, I've, that, have, that has always been interesting is... Um, this is one of the first mistakes that David did in this whole situation. It said that uh, there was a time when all the kings went forth to battle, but he went ahead and stayed at home and sent somebody else to do it for him. And it came to pass in an evening, evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. Well, there's another thing David did and messed up. Not only was he wasn't even supposed to be home, he was supposed to be out at battle, but he also uh, looked upon a woman as she was bathing. And David sent and acquired after the woman. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? Hmm. We know how this story goes. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, and she was, for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So here's a third thing that David did wrong. He slept with another man's wife. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did, and how the people did, and how the war prospered. And David said to Uriah, Go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his lord, and went not to his house." And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? While, why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? And Uriah said unto David, The ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my lord Joab and the servants of my lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink? And to lie with my wife, as thou livest and as thy soul liveth, I will not do this thing. Now, something that we need to look at here too is David was trying to get Uriah to go home so he could claim the child wasn't his. So there's another thing David did wrong. And David said to Uriah, Tarry here today also, and tomorrow I will let thee depart. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day, and the morrow. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him, 
and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his bed with the servants of his Lord, but went not down to his house. Boy, David was trying hard, wasn't he? Even got him drunk. Figured, oh man, he's going to get drunk. He's going to go straight home. But he didn't. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote in the letter saying, Set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. He sent his own death letter with him. That's pretty brutal, isn't it? And notice how it says here, set him in the, hot, the forefront of the hottest battle and retire ye from him. In other words, when the battle gets going and all the men are up there fighting, make sure everybody backs away from Uriah. Make sure he's out there fighting all by himself. That's pretty rough, isn't it? And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah in unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab and there fell some of the people of, excuse me, I have to turn the page, the servants of David and Uriah the Hittite died also. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. He charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling the matters of the war unto the king, and if so be that the king's wrath arise, and he say unto thee, Wherefore approach ye so nigh unto the city when ye did fight? Knew ye not that they would shoot from the wall? Joab's covering his butt. Right? He knows that King David was a very smart war maker. He was a very smart commander. And he's saying, if he gets mad at you and says all these things, we're going to go down here a little bit. Verse number 21, it says here, who smote Abimelech, the son of Jerusalem. Well, okay. Did not a woman cast <clears throat> a piece of millstone upon him from the wall that he died in Thebes? Why went ye nigh the wall? Then say thou, thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. So Joab knew that King David was going to question his uh, strategy, shall we say. And he said, "When if the king gets mad and the king says all these things and he gets upset with you, say that Uriah is dead. So we go down here to verse number 24. This is, after, this is while the messenger is talking to David. He says, And the shooter shot from off the wall upon thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead. And thy servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. Then David said unto the messenger, Thou shalt, thou, excuse me, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing displease thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and overthrow it, and encourage thou him. Hmm. David heard what he wanted to hear, that Uriah was dead. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the morning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. So we look at all the things that David did. He did a lot of bad things in just that one small period of time. He didn't go out to battle like he was supposed to. <clears throat> he looked upon a woman that he shouldn't have. He slept with a married woman. Meanwhile, he was married himself. Got her pregnant. Then he tried to convince and tried to force the husband to go back home to his wife so that way he could claim, well, this ain't mine. I mean, he tried really hard, didn't he? He got him drunk and everything. And Uriah was still a valiant man, a very loyal man and he said no my brethren are out there in the field and it's sleeping in tents I'm not going to go home so Uriah was a good guy wasn't he 
So David tried all these things, and then he went ahead and said, you know what, I'm going to have to kill Uriah. Wow. So he wrote a letter to his commander, his general out in the field, and said, make sure this guy dies. And he sent the letter with the guy he wanted to die. David did a whole bunch of bad stuff right there, didn't he? He did a whole bunch of bad things. And the thing that it says there in verse number 27, the last part of it says, But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now notice that's not just after he slept with Bathsheba. That's not just after he, he killed uh, uh, Uriah. It is after the entire account. That means the entire thing displeased God. How many times do we do a whole bunch of bad things in a row that displease God? We do it all the time, don't we? That first thing we do might displease the Lord. But what do we do after that? How many times have we done those things where we'll do one thing wrong and then we'll follow it up with something else is wrong and then we'll follow it up because we're trying to cover up something that we've done? We are humans. We all do it. So we hear in number, uh, chapter number 12 that Nathan, let's read a couple verses here. And the Lord sent Nathan, this was the prophet at the time, unto David. And he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing, save one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and nourished, up, and it grew up together with him and with his own children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. So basically, this little farmer, this poor man, had a pet lamb. It was his pet. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Can you imagine being that rich man? Got all this stuff and, oh, we see where this is going, don't we? Hmm. And David's anger was ken greatly kindled against the man. And he said, unto, said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die die and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity that's interesting isn't it so the the prophet came to david with a parable he said uh, the rich man has all this stuff need for nothing but this poor man had this sweet little lamb it was just everything he loved it with every ounce of his being. And the rich man took her from him. Now look at what Nathan says here next. Verse number 7 says, And Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thou art the man. Can you imagine, David? sitting on his throne, sitting there looking good, as he probably did, being powerful David, King David of Israel. And then have the, the prophet of the Lord look at you and say, that guy that you were just angry at is you. How many times, you know, this is, this is kind of off, off, off on the little side here. How many times has the preacher said something that makes us mad at somebody else. <laughs> and then we realize that it applies to us. How many times has that happened? Happens a lot. Happens a lot. So here's David. He's angry. And Nathan says, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, 
and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah, and if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Can you imagine being the guy that God has anointed so much that if you didn't have enough and you told God, he would have given it to you? Can you imagine being in that situation? That's where David was. Wherefore, hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now, if we keep reading through there, we see that God said that a lot of things are going to happen to David. He said that, verse number 10, Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and I will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of the sun. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel and before the sun. So there's all these things that are going to happen to David. And notice something that God tells David, you did it in secret, which most of us, we sin in secret. It's the truth. That's what happens. But God punishes us in front of everybody. Just as he did David. So there's different things that happened to David. He said that that man that stole the lamb from that rich or from that poor man would have to restore fourfold. And David had fourfold reaping of what he sowed. The son with Bathsheba died. Stay here, look here, verse number 18. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? He had fasted and prayed. He was in a pit on the earth. He was begging God to save the child, and it didn't happen. God was punishing him. So if we look down here, verse number 20. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. Then he came to his own house, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Look at the, the, uh, the fact of what happened here. David knew he was being punished by God. And if you look at what he did, one of the first things he did was he worshipped God. How many of us when we're punished by God, one of the first things that pop into our mind is to worship God. Not very many of us, huh? It's real easy to get mad. So the first punishment, the, the fourfold punishment of David was the son to Bathsheba died. Now go over here, the second one, Samuel chapter 13. I'm going to read the whole thing, but one of, so, one of David's sons attacks his daughter. Ammon wronged Tamar. We're going to read just a couple of few verses here. Uh, verses 1, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. So basically, this dude really loved his sister. Pretty gross, huh? Well, half-sister. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he devises this plan with his friend Jonadab to fake being sick to get his sister to come and make him feel better. Uh-huh. So we look down here a little bit more. Let's see. Verse number 11. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, little cakes that he wanted him to make for her, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. 
And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. Well, we know what he did. Verse number 14. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. That's a pretty rough situation, isn't it? One of David's sons raped his half-sister. What a punishment to David, isn't it? What a punishment that it happened because of David's sin. Isn't it interesting that uh, what God will do when we mess up? Some pretty bad things can happen. <clears throat> so what happened next? Absalom kills Amnon. Stay here in verse number, or chapter 13. Look here at verse number 22. And Absalom spake unto his brother, neither good nor bad. Brother Amnon, excuse me, neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon because he had forced his sister to mar. Well, I don't blame him. <laughs> But, look at, look at verse number 21, just real quick, as kind of a side here. But when King David heard all of, the, of all these things, he was very wroth. David was mad, wasn't he? So anyway, let's go down here to verse number 28. Now Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark ye now, when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, then kill him. Fear not, have not, not I commanded you, be courageous and be valiant. See, Absalom planned after two years to have this big party and feast with all the king's sons present, and he figured at this time I'll go ahead and kill Amnon. So he did. And the servants of Absalom did, verse number 29, unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded, then all the king's sons arose, and every man gat Am up upon his mule and fled. And it came to pass, while they were in the way, that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. <laughs> Poor David, huh? Then the king arose and tore his garments and lay on the earth, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Shemia, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons. For Amnon only is dead, for by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. So look at that. Uh, David lost the child with Bathsheba. One of his sons raped one of his daughters. And then Absalom, one of his sons, killed Amnon, another one of his sons. That's a lot of brutal stuff that happened to David. All because one night he decided he was going to not go to battle. He was going to lust after a woman that wasn't his. And he was going to sleep with her and kill her husband. All because he made some really stupid choices, a lot of bad things happened to David. The final thing that happened was his own son tried to kill him. Let's go over here to chapter number 15. I'm just going to read a couple of verses here. Chapter 15, verse number 13. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. See, Absalom had uh, started a rebellion against his dad. And uh, what does it say here, verse number 14? And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom, Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly, and bring evil upon us, 
and smite the city with the edge of the swords. It's the sword. Here was King David, the mighty man of Israel, the conqueror. And he ran. He was afraid. What happened? Well, Absalom came. He took everything over, took his, his mom's, or excuse me, his dad's wives and all that, just as God promised. And then David son in that whole thing the fourth thing that happened to David was the rebellion against him his own son wanted to kill him and then David lost his son Absalom look over here chapter number 18 I'm just going to read three verses look here verse number 9 and Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule went under the thick boughs of a great oak, and his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth, and the mule that was under him went away. So Absalom hung from a tree. What was King David's reaction? Look down here, verse number 32. And the king said unto Cushi, is the young man Absalom safe? In all the war, in all the battle, King David was worried about his son Absalom. He loved Absalom. Absalom was one of his favorites. The enemies of my lord the king and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt be as that young man is. And the king was much moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept and as he went thus, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee. O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. See, David was punished. He was punished pretty greatly too. All because he made a few stupid decisions he was punished. Galatians chapter 6. This will be our last verse. Galatians chapter 6. Look at verse number 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. The Bible says we serve the same God today, the yesterday, and forever. It's the same one that, that David served. It's the same one that Moses served. Does God punish us when we do something really stupid? Yeah, he does. And if we look at the story of what happened to David, he was a man after God's own heart. God loved King David. Matter of fact, King David is the one that God is compared to and Jesus is compared to. The seed of David, the throne of David, 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 everything about David. But look at what happened when David messed up. God punished him severely. He lost a child first. He had rape in his own family. His family was murdering each other. His family tried to murder him. All because he sinned. What lesson can we learn from King David? Try not to sin. <laughs> pretty simple. It's a pretty easy lesson. Try not to mess up. Because God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, we will reap. Just as David did. All right, we'll take a break.